The question is the retrobulbar block is or has. Option 1 is less complication rate. Option 2 is paralyzes 7th cranial now. Option 3 is technically tougher in comparison to peribulbar block. And option 4 is most commonly employed method of ocular anesthesia. So here the retrobulbar block we have to choose one option which is correct. Right. So what is the essence of this question? The examiner is trying to make you aware that there is actually a difference between peribulbar block and retrobulbar block which are commonly employed anesthetic uh, methods when it comes to ophthalmology right so why when it comes to ocular anesthesia most of the ocular operations are taken care by local anesthetics because they are cheaper they are economical they are easy to perform okay post operative uh, the time is, uh, recovery time is less when we use local anesthetics there's so many advantages with it when it comes to ocular anesthesia usually we use topical anesthesia in common practice followed by facial blocks and retrobulbar block the next one is peribulbar block so these are the four methods what we commonly use Topically, we have to directly instill the drops onto the cornea and conjunctiva to number it. Facial block means we have to inject the uh, anesthetic into the facial nerve, be it be the root, trunk or division. Next is retro and peribulbar blocks. The basic difference between the retro and peribulbar blocks is, in retrobulbar block, we inject the anesthetic directly into the muscle cone. So this is the area where we inject. The peribulbar block will inject the local anesthetic. So this is the peribulbar root. We inject local anesthetic around the muscle cone, not into the muscle cone. Okay. So what happens when we instill anesthetic directly inside the muscle cone, we are trying to anesthetize ciliary ganglion, right? Ciliary nerves, yes. And also cranial now 3 and 6. So what is the issue here? Cranial now 4 is not anesthetized when we use retro bulbar block. So what is happening here? The cranial now 4 supplies SO4 that is superior oblique. This is the code. So superior oblique is not supplied now. And we have another muscle outside the muscle cone. What is that? That is orbicularis oculi. So this orbicularis oculi muscle is supplied by cranial nerve 7. So because it is lying outside the muscle cone, even 7 is not supplied. So what are all cranial nerves which are anesthetized by retrobulbar block? Cranial nerve 2, definitely the optic part. Cranial nerve 3 and the cranial nerve 6th one. Whereas cranial nerve 4 and cranial nerve 7 are not anesthetized here. So this is the reason whenever we do a retrobulbar block, we need to also give a facial block. Okay. Retrobulbar block also requires facial block because the facial nerve is not anesthetized. So because the orbicularis ocula is free, while we are doing surgery, the patient can the patient can close his eyes. Okay. So this is the reason. When it comes to peribulbar block, because we are giving it outside the muscle cone, okay, it can easily anesthetize orbicularis ocula. So peribulbar block does not require a separate facial block. So along with this advantage, the peribulbar block, because we are injecting it outside the muscle cone, we are not injuring the major nerve structures and the vessels which are present near the muscle cone. So the complication rate, complication rate is less when it comes to peribulbar block. Because of these advantages, in common ophthalmological practice, peribulbar block is preferred over retrobulbar block. Okay, so let me give you a table also for this. 
Look at this table. This is peribulbar block and retrobulbar block. Now tell me peri. Peri is superior. Superior is peri. So we have peri in the superior. Better block is peri block. And peribulbar block, it is technically easier to perform. It has less complication rate. It does not require a separate facial block. And But the problem is because we are giving it around the muzzle cone, there is a tough muzzle coat. So it requires more volume of anesthetic to produce a desired effect. And also in this procedure, the injections are instilled. So let us let, let us take this as an orbit, right? This is an orbit and the injections are instilled above and below the orbit outside the muzzle cone. Okay, so because of the denser muscles, it is difficult to get a complete dense block. So uh, sixth one and uh, uh, the fourth one, uh, more volume of anesthetic and we may not produce a complete dense block. These are the two disadvantages associated with the peribulbar block. Let us go to the retrobulbar block. It is technically tough. Yes, because we have to go to the muzzle cone. There are high chances of complication. It requires a separate facial block and also it requires less volume of anesthetic. This is an advantage to produce a desired effect and injections are instilled into the muzzle cone which may lead to severe complications. Easy to get a complete dense block and this is also an advantage. Let us now quickly look at the complications of both retrobulbar and peribulbar blocks. You can see the list. The list is vast when it comes to the retrobulbar block. The most common complication associated with retrobulbar block is retrobulbar hemorrhage. So this is it, retrobulbar hemorrhage. And the second complication is CRAO, central retinal artery occlusion. And there are few more complications. One is subconjunctival edema, penetration or globe perforation is also a complication and damage to the optic nerve may lead to optic nerve atrophy. When it comes to complications of the peribulbar block, the spread of local anesthetic to the contralateral eye may occur, periorbital ecchymosis may occur because of the injection and bleeding, it may produce transient blindness, but complication rate is less in case of peribulbar blocks. So your take home is just write superior and inside that we have peri. So peribulbar block is superior over retrobulbar block. Let us now quickly get back to the question. So here the retrobulbar block is less complication rate. No, it has highest complication rate. It paralyzes seventh cranial nerve. No, seventh cranial nerve is paralyzed by peribulbar block. That is orbicularis oculi muscle. Technically tougher in comparison to peribulbar block. Yes, we have to inject the muscle cone. This might be a correct option. Most commonly employed method of ocular anesthesia is actually peribulbar block again. So the answer for this question is option 3.